Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSU FCU's Financial Education Seminar Series. We appreciate you all joining us and are excited to be here with you virtually this evening. These presentations were created with you in mind, with the intention to give financial education on a number of relatable topics to help expand your knowledge of finances. Each event will be hosted by a member of our financial education department or by one of our partners, connecting you with resources in our community. We have a number of diverse presentations planned for you this year, and you can explore and register for them by visiting us at msufcu.org forward slash events, or you can scan that QR code that's at the bottom right of your screen right now. Tonight's event is being recorded. To rewatch or share the presentation, you can go to youtube.com forward slash msufcu and then select the seminar series from the playlist options. Recordings are usually available within about three weeks of the event. We will have time after the presentation to address questions submitted to the Q&A, and that segment will not be recorded. You may send your inquiries at any time during the event, which will later be answered in the order they were received. We'll also provide some additional information and resources in the chat, but please reserve the Q&A panel for your questions. I'm Therese Bacon, and I'll be your facilitator this evening. If you have any concerns or technology issues, you can go ahead and reach out to me directly in the chat, and I'll, I'll try to help you as best I can. So joining us, we have an amazing guest this evening who's here to present on one of our featured fintechs, Debbie, and how it can aid us in overcoming debt. Allow me to introduce our host, Rachel Lauren, who is the Debbie COO and co-founder. Welcome, Rachel, and thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about what inspired the creation of Debbie, and then we can lead right into your presentation this evening. For sure. And thank you, Therese, for that awesome introduction. So like, like Therese said, I'm Rachel Lauren. I'm the co-founder and COO um, of Debbie. We are the first platform that rewards people for reaching their financial goals. So debt included, but also savings um, and kind of all, all of your financial goals. And really, you know, what inspired us to start this, this journey and, and to start this company was um, really came out of a, a personal need, right? My co-founder and I, we met in college and she ended up graduating with about $15,000 in credit card debt on top of all of her student loans, despite the fact that we both studied finance. And she ended up working at a large bank. She worked at Marcus by Goldman Sachs in their first year of the business. She was super excited to work there. You know, they were going to help people refinance their credit card debt. Um, and then she looked at the data and got really, really disappointed. Because what she saw was that more than half of the borrowers were rebounding back to the same level of credit card debt within less than a year of trying to refinance it. And so, you know, she kind of asked the question to all the people she was working with, what are we doing to actually help people improve their financial well-being over time, right? Not just provide a, a single point in time, um, you know, short-term solution, but how are we going to build long-term sustainable financial habits? And nobody really had a good answer for her. Um, and so that's what inspired us uh, to build Debbie. So what we realize is that if you look at our financial industry today, it's a lot of kind of not so great things happening, unfortunately. You've got credit card debt that's hit, I think now it's over a trillion and a half. Uh, so it's a record high in over 40 years. Um, that is kind of being lumped together with the fact that credit card interest rates are the highest they've ever been. It's actually probably higher than this now. This presentation is, is from a little while ago. And so rates have gone up since then. Um, we have student loan repayments that came back. And I know not everyone is yet doing that or they think maybe they'll still get some stuff forgiven. And so really slow rolling it, but that's starting to put a dent into people's pockets. And the personal savings rate is almost the lowest it's been in over 20 years. I think the latest I saw was it's at around three and a half percent. So the average American is saving around three and a half percent of their paycheck when, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that was closer to 10 or 15 percent. Um, so we're really not, you know, in a great place as a country. And I think when Frida and I sat down trying to think about why that is. Um, aside from, you know, income, not necessarily keeping up with, with spending. If you look at the other equation, all of our incentives today are centered around consumption, around spending. You look at credit card rewards programs, you look at, you know, your Walmarts and your Macy's of the world, they're all built in a way to get you to spend more money. And that's great for them. And that's not necessarily great for us. So how can we essentially use those incentives and turn them around to help people build better financial habits, right? How can we reward people for the opposite, for spending less money, for paying on time, 
for putting money into a savings account for, you know, all the good things that they do. So obviously all these things are, are here to scare you a little bit, but there is a, obviously, like I said, a, a silver lining. Um, you know, there's, we see a lot of solutions now, I think, taking advantage of the average consumer. You've probably seen ads like this all over your Instagram feed or maybe on TikTok or other places. Because so many people are in debt, you have debt relief companies coming in and saying, you know, we're going to wipe out all of this debt for you and you're not going to have to worry about it. But what they don't tell you is on the other side, your credit is getting hurt pretty tremendously when you go into one of these programs because they're asking you to go delinquent. And not only that, whatever debt is forgiven, whatever they are able to settle, you still have to pay taxes on it. Uh, that's the that's the other kind of little secret that that they don't tell you about these programs. And so, you know, we've kind of come to a place where I think there's a lot of options, um, but not a lot of education. And so our goal with Debbie, like I said, was to create an alternative reward structure where we could reward people for building positive financial habits for, you know, working on the behavioral side of finance and being intentional about their money, as opposed to just, you know, taking out loans or going through debt relief or trying to automate the problem away, which, you know, hasn't been working for the last 10, 20 years for, for us Americans. So how did, how did we think about this? And, and how do we think about psychology in general as it relates to finance? You know, a lot of times when we spoke to investors in the very beginning about building Debbie, we said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could create positive reinforcement for all of these um, positive financial behaviors? And their responses were, well, we already have, you know, we already have systems in place to get people to do, you know, for the bank, you know, for the banks to, to get people to do what, what they want them to do. We have, you know, credit score dings, late fees, there's all these punishments out there. Theoretically, those should work to get people to, you know, make their payments on time and save and make sure that they don't go into overdraft. But the reality is they don't, right? Punishments are maybe a good catalyst for change. Um, but they're not good at long-term behavioral change. You think about, you know, a kid that gets grounded all the time, right? Someone who maybe doesn't get grounded all the time, that one time they get grounded, they're not going to want to do that bad behavior again. But the kid that gets grounded all the time, eventually they just say, okay, well, you know, I'm I'm just going to get grounded again. And they don't change their behavior because they they already expect it. And I think that the same thing applies to our financial behavior. If we're the kind of person that, you know, our credit score just keeps getting dinged for, for certain reasons, or we're always getting late fees or overdraft fees, eventually we just accept it. We just say, well, I'm the person that's in this situation and, th and that's my situation. And I just keep, keep going at it. Eventually the banks, there's very little they can do. Um, and so how do we, how do we turn that around and use positive psychology uh, to improve people's financial well-being? So it's really less about what you know, and it's more about what you do. I think a lot of people will say, you know, financial literacy in America is very, very low, which is true. Um, we do have very low rates, very low rates of financial literacy. But what's interesting is that just knowing is not enough, unfortunately. I wish it was just knowing about certain financial products or whether they're predatory or not um, is not necessarily going to help you make a better financial decision. I think a really good example on this um, is a study that was done um, at a at restaurants um, in New York and Pennsylvania, where they essentially put the calorie counts on the different food menu items between burgers, salads, all these different things. And you'd think that by putting the calorie counts, people would choose the healthier option. But if someone came into McDonald's wanting a burger, they're going to get the burger, right? It's the same thing. If you, you learn about how many calories are in a cookie, but you're in the cookie shop, you're going to want the cookie. It doesn't really matter. And the same thing applies for money. Right. You can know that, you know, you, you're going to go buy that TV and if you finance it, you're going to have to pay a lot of interest on it. But at the end of the day, you want the nice, shiny TV. You don't want, you know, the, the smaller monitor. And so you're going to eat that and you're going to try to go for it anyway. Here's a good example. So back to the back to the TV example, you have two options on the left. You can make four. And actually, the math here is wrong, but let's call it, um, you know, 60 monthly payments of $20 out of 48. So 60 monthly payments of $20 versus 20 monthly payments, 12, sorry, 12 monthly payments of $90. Which one of these costs more and which one of these feels better? 
if you guys want to put the answer in the chat, you can. I'll give you a few seconds. Again, excuse the 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 math here. It should say 60 monthly payments, not 48. So just cross out the 48 and put 60 on there. So the reality is, is that the left side costs more, right? So even though you're making smaller monthly payments, you're paying more over the life of the of the payments, but it also feels better. Right, you it feels a lot better to pay twenty dollars a month than it does to pay ninety dollars a month, and that's the decision that most Americans today are making is to choose the option on the left because they say, "Well, I can afford twenty dollars. I can't afford ninety dollars." When in reality, they end up paying more over time. So, what's what's the solution here? Right, we can't just say all of a sudden, "I'm going to stop spending. I'm going to be good." I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do all the right things. It's kind of like what happens when we make New Year's resolutions, right? We've been not doing the right things all year long. We've been eating the, a lot of cookies. We haven't been physically active at all. And then New Year's comes around and we just say, okay, I'm going to be really, really good. I'm going to go to the gym, you know, three times a week. I'm going to eat clean. But, you know, the stats here also show that only 9% of Americans complete their New Year's resolutions. So that's not really a solution either. But why, why is that? It's really for three reasons. The first is that their goals are way too big, right? So if you, let's say, aren't working out at all and all of a sudden you want to work out three, four times a week, that is a big jump. The second is you don't have a why. So people don't necessarily define the reason why they want to reach that goal. Maybe it's you want to feel healthier. You want to reduce your medical expenses. You want to look better, whatever that, you know, whatever that why is for you. And when it comes to finances, maybe that's saving up for a home. Maybe that's saving for your kid's education. Uh, maybe something for yourself. You want to buy something for yourself in the next 12 months. And the last is that you may not be ready. Um, so you might tell yourself, okay, I'm ready to do this. But then when push comes to shove, you you haven't really done the 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 mental work to to be ready. So how do we how do we kind of dive into each three of uh, all three of these and 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 work on them? So the first, um, where the goal is too big, right? So back to the example of, of working out. I said I'm going to work out three times a week, and I have not worked out in the last six months. Clearly, that is a very big jump from point A to point B. Now, if instead of saying I'm going to work out three times a week or even four times a week, I say I'm going to start going on five minute walk once a week, right? Going, that's like the tiniest, tiniest, and maybe that's even too small of a step, but let's just say that is a much easier starting point for me to now say, I'm going to go on a five minute walk every day or, you know, three times a week. And then from there progress. So go to step A1, A2, A3, than it is to say, I'm now going to go work out, you know, sign up for crunch fitness and, and go there four times a week. So what is that smallest amount of movement that you can do? What is that smallest change that you can make where you know it's guaranteed that you will do it? On the financial side, that could mean instead of saying, I'm not going to spend anything at Amazon this month, you could say, okay, I'm going to spend 50% less or I'm going to spend 20% less. Whatever that, that smaller number is for you that you think is manageable that you can hit, Focus on that because then you'll exceed it, you'll get motivated, and then you'll want to keep building up on that. The second, have a why. So back to the back to the second point. You've got to define the reason why you are going on this journey, whether it's paying off debt, whether it's saving, whether it's um, whatever, whatever your financial goal is, you have to have a reason behind it because then otherwise, you know, I, I see a lot of um, I see a lot of people who will just save because they're what I call financial hoarders. Um, I wish I had this problem. But when you when you get into even you know that extreme, you now it's very hard to make financial decisions to actually buy things. So people who are let's say on the opposite extreme where they're financial hoarders, they have a hard time you know buying nice things for themselves. They're incredibly frugal. They feel they can't afford anything. They have a lot of financial anxiety, even though they have, you know, savings built up. Um, and so it goes both ways where in order for you to feel confident about your money, it's about defining and establishing what that reason is for you to reach that goal. For me, I want to start a family. So, you know, I, 
I feel, you know, a certain amount of money that I can do that with. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's no amount of money. You just do it. But that's what it is for me. That's my personal why. Um, so define what that is for you. Um, and then the last piece, right? So not being not being ready. How can you get ready? How can you kind of jumpstart that, that readiness? And it's really about rewarding yourself. And this is really where Debbie comes in is at the end of the day, you know, even though we're humans, we are kind of part of the animal kingdom and we instinctively react to things the same way that animals do. And we react to incentives. And so if we build small incentives for ourselves, it will be a lot easier for us to reach our goals, even if we're not necessarily ready for them. So if I, for example, if I'm trying to go to a student and I'm trying to tell that student, hey, you should start building a savings account. Theoretically in their mind, they say, yeah, I know I need to do that, but I'm not great with money and like finances, hold on, finance, wait, what happened here? We're back. Um, finances are hard and I don't know about budgeting and all these things are difficult. It's going to be very hard for me to convince them why they need, you know, a savings account. Now, if I tell them, hey, if you put $10 in a savings account, I'm going to give you $2 back. That's a very different pitch, right? That now becomes a very easy decision. It's not, oh, I'm saving for this long-term potential, you know, thing that I'm going to have to experience. It's you're going to give me money to do it. Or, you know, if, if you tell yourself, if I put $10 in a savings account, I can eat my favorite treat today. You can define what that, what that um, reward is for yourself. But that's really what we do at Debbie is, is helping people kickstart those conversations with themselves, even when they're not necessarily ready for it. So I, I've already, we're getting to the slide about what Debbie is. I've kind of already completely pitched it. So you guys know, so I'm going to totally skip this slide, but really the way it works um, is you download the app. It's entirely free. You can link all of your accounts to be able to see all of your balances and transactions. We help you set custom goals based on your income, based on all of the different um, kind of financial accounts that you have. As you reach those goals um, and as you complete, um, we have a whole behavioral psychology curriculum that's similar to a lot of the things I'm talking about here, kind of in bite-sized pieces. As you do all of those things, you earn points. Those points translate into real cash dollars. We've paid out now, I think over $100,000 in, in cash rewards across all of our users. MSUFCU is an awesome sponsor. So that's why it's free because MSUFCU, they do uh, cover it for all MSU FCU members. Uh, so we're really excited about that partnership to be able to offer Debbie to you guys. Not only that, but you'll also be able to see um, MSUFCU products that are relevant for you, whether that's high yield savings accounts, debt refinance loans that you don't end up going to the big bad debt relief companies that you know aren't necessarily there to help you and MSUFC will be able to help you find what's right for you. So the way you get access um, is through your institution. Like I said, you'll get a push notification or an email if you haven't already, go check. Um, if you didn't get it, you can always just go to, I actually think I have a link somewhere in here. If I go all the way to the end, I'm not sure if this is the right QR code, but if you go to joindebbie.com slash MSUFCU, you will be able to use that um, link and it will match you with MSUFCU so that you can get access uh, for free. Just a little bit of, you know, the case study here, just so you guys can see some of the results that we've seen. So all the things I'm saying are rooted in real science. We've tested this on real users in the wild. 40% uh, of members using Debbie reduce their debt on average by around 10% a month. And again, that's just them using the platform. There's no like special product that we're offering them. It's it's really, you know, the work they're putting in. Um, we see on average between $70 to $100 uh, added to savings per month across all the members using Debbie. Um, and then we see people being able to refinance for a much lower APR um, and earn additional rewards uh, by doing that. We also see people making a lot more on-time payments. So in general, you know, you'll you'll be able to reap these benefits. You do have to put in the work. Um, I'm not saying, you know, we're like a magic button that just does it all for you. It's still on you, but we're here to kind of cheerlead you guys along the way. So like I said, um, go to joindebbie.com slash MSUFC. I'm going to put the link in the chat, but that is all from me. 
Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I did throw um in the chat also um the oh, yeah, yeah like the dual brown yeah but we've got maybe both. yours is newer because I had mscfc.org forward slash Debbie but okay okay cool all right I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that was right um but yeah once again this is free for our members so if you are in this meeting and you are a member um you can um yeah you can get the passcode from that mscfc.org forward slash Debbie um download the app and enter that passcode and you should be able to access the app um, but yes, thank you so much. I this I love this app. Um, I I have used it in the past, um, and I just passed it along to my daughter, who's 22 and has racked up a little bit of credit card debt, being out on her own now. Um, and to her, it seems like an insurmountable amount. To me, I'm like, you know, I'm like a lot of people only wish they had you know that much debt. But um, to her, you know, she really she just doesn't. In, in, yeah, she hasn't like had years of budgeting experience and all those things. So, and me being in my, you know, my position as a financial educator, obviously it's really embarrassing when my own children don't want to listen to me. So I sent her the link for the app <laughs> and she downloaded it and she's using it now too. So, um, exactly so what I was saying before, yeah. like sometimes when someone's in a position where they don't really want to hear it and they're a little bit in denial, it's very hard to tell someone, Hey, you should maybe look into this because they, they know in the back of their head that you're right, but it's, it's the getting around to it that causes yeah. anxiety. So yeah. if there's like just a little bit of a carrot, it's, it's, it's easier to, you know, to, to get there. Exactly. Yes. Especially when your mom's telling you to do something, you know, that never goes over well, so. yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I hope she is successful with it, but um, yeah, she was just like, what, this is connected to MSUFCU and you guys offer it. So yeah, I'm like, how many times have I told you this daughter? <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, I think it is a really great resource for our members and for everyone um, to access. So if anyone has any questions, oh, can someone did ask, can I get the app from, yeah, it's it's in the app store. And yeah. if you wanna just, I'll, I'll put the links in the app store as well. Um... There you guys go. And you can download it directly from the app store. I'll send also the Android link. It is available for both Android and iOS. Okay. Oh, and a member did actually say, so I had my link wrong. Hold on. She said she got an error message with the Debbie app. Okay. Um, all right. Let me so also, that. before we um, answer any further questions, I did want to... Um, just let everyone know um, if you aren't, if you don't have any, any further questions, you're going to be exiting the Zoom. Um, there will be a short survey that pops up. So go ahead and take that so we can get your feedback on today's session. Um, I also wanted to mention our upcoming seminar series events. We have um, a in-person event. So we're getting back to adding some a, a few more in-person events this season. Um, we'll be at our Farm Lane branch if you're in the Lansing area. Um, with our financial solutions uh, team here from MSU FCU. They're gonna speak about three transitions to retirement and that will be Tuesday, September 17th. And then we have another webinar on this uh, 18th of, of September um, with Children and Trip Law Offices. And they're gonna be speaking on aiding your aging parent with estate planning. So please feel free to join us with those if they interest you. Um, and with that, I'm gonna stop recording and then we'll take any other questions that have come through. Thanks.